Candace, and today we're here with digital media coordinator Brittany Van Voorhees, who recently did a 180. Definitely. So did tell me about that. What happened? Well, I was a TV meteorologist up in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I just wasn't honestly too fond of the area. Didn't meet a lot of people I really felt like got me. And at work, you know, there wasn't a lot of work satisfaction. Very rarely did I even get a thank you for covering a shift or working a holiday. And you know, a lot of times at work, you won't at least awareness from your bosses when you're going above and beyond. I just didn't feel like I got any of that there. So I decided to pack up and move back to Florida. My family lives here, my significant other lives here. So it just worked out really well. So you were in the news business or the weather business, yes. I guess. And you even um, got your, your degree in meteorology, correct? Correct. So was it a hard decision to kind of just put that all aside and completely shift gears? Yes and no. It was hard to know that I did go to school specifically for meteorology for my master's degree, but I actually have my undergraduate degree in communication from the University of Florida. And so what I was doing on air was kind of a combination of the two, but what I'm doing now is pretty much exactly what I went to undergrad for. So it's pretty much using one over the other. And I actually think my experience in the news business helps a lot in my new role here because you meet new people, you get to really pull a lot of content out of them. And I don't really think I had that skill necessarily before actually just taking the plunge and being on air. I think did, it's made me a better communicator for sure. Did you struggle with the decision at all? Honestly, not really, <laughs> not really. I was really excited to come start here because after meeting you and everyone else who worked here, I was really excited, great work environment, and that has proven to be 100% correct. And also, I just really wanted to be back closer to home. It was honestly a no-brainer. It's interesting because a lot of people that I talk to, or that I think you talk to in life in general, you know, before making a major career shift, I guess it wasn't so major because you are in a similar field, but before making a, a shift like that, there's a lot of um, you know, decision and thought and um, struggle that goes into it. But I don't know if maybe that's different for different generations. But what would your advice be to other people who are maybe struggling with a big life decision like that? Yeah, I think in the struggle, it probably was before actually making the plunge to start applying to other jobs. I think when I found this job, that's when it became a no brainer because it just fits so well. But if I'm talking to any other, someone else from my generation, I'd say don't stay in a job where you're unhappy because I think you need to have a work-life balance in every aspect really of your life, but also especially having that balance and not letting work consume your life and being able to actually be satisfied with the work that you're doing. When you don't have that satisfaction or you're not getting that appreciation from your coworkers or your bosses and you're not meeting good people that you feel like you're associating yourself with, I think that really can put a damper on a lot of people's lives. So I'd say take the plunge if you felt awful for a long time, take the plunge and I'd say probably 99% of the time it works out for the better. Good deal. All right, so I have some, some fun questions for okay. you. What's your favorite color? Pink. What is your favorite TV show? Well, I have a lot, but when I was in high school and probably still now, my favorite show is One Tree Hill. I don't oh, know if you ever watched that. Oh, I do remember I that I love show. Sophia Bush. Okay. She's the main character on that show, and I've continued to watch her in other things. So. Okay. All-time favorite movie. All-time. The Princess Diaries. Really? Yes. That's a good one. I that love Anne Hathaway, <laughs> and I have naturally curly hair. Just like Mia Thermopolis at the beginning of the, at the beginning really? of the movie. Maybe not that poofy, but it's definitely very, very curly. And so as a kid, I really could relate to her struggles with doing her hair. So if only I became a princess, though. That right. hasn't happened Aren't yet. we all princesses in our own mind? In our own mind. <laughs> Oops. Is he okay? We can, sh let's show. You have okay. a, a new addition to your family. Yeah. I think he's under you, actually. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he just Where fell. Did you go? It's fine. Mr. White, we've got to show this little guy. He did really well for a while. Oh my goodness. Look at this little guy. Tell us about him. Okay, so this is Roger. He's my new puppy. He's Therapy a, dog, yeah, right? To, uh, help yeah. with adjustment. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> he's obviously very cute. Sorry, oh, oh that's up. okay. I mic, no, it's fine. I won't hear you anyway. Well, he's obviously very cute. He's a sh uh, Shih Tzu and a Yorkie mix. So I'd say he's probably just as cute as a Shih Tzu without the scrunchy face. Um, he's named Roger after Roger Federer, the tennis player. Uh, my boyfriend and I are really into tennis. You can see his little tennis Aww. ID tag. And he's got the iHeart tennis. So 
he's very well behaved and very cute, so I'm sure he'll be spending a lot of days in the office. <laughs> All right. closing his eyes right we now. We had to show you the puppy. So I just have two more questions and then we'll be done. Um, oh, actually three more questions, I lied. What's the last book you read? Um, I'm actually reading a book right now that's okay. fabulous. It's Natural Disaster. I cover the Mayan one. It was uh, written by the ABC chief meteorologist, Ginger Z. And it's about, even though I don't ever plan on going back to the TV business, it's actually about her struggle with her first jobs in the industry and her bout with depression and stuff like that. So a lot of this stuff I can relate to in a way. So it's actually a really great book. So Awesome. Yeah. What's your pet peeve? Um, I have a lot of them. <laughs> Top three. <laughs> uh, probably when people don't speak their mind, when you know something's wrong or whatever the case is and you ask them what's wrong or trying to work something out, they won't communicate with you, which probably stems from the fact that I consider myself a pretty good communicator. Uh, and probably along with that, just when people don't reply to emails, text messages, just, I guess in general, people don't answer me is probably my number one pet peeve. Okay. And finally, what inspires you? Uh, really people. I really enjoy being around people and meeting new people. And I think that hearing their stories or knowing where they work or just talking to them just inspires me to do better every single day, especially when you meet someone with a unique story inspires me to go on and you know sometimes you see a lot of bad things in the world and you get sour on humanity and then you meet really fabulous people and it kind of makes that all go away. Awesome well thank you for sharing your story with us and we hope that Brittany's story inspired you. Bye. <laughs>